This is how to make your own GABA. No, this is not the next organic chemistry project of Walter White. This is how to make GABA in your brain. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn of ChrisMasterjohnPhD.com, and this is Chris Masterjohn Light, where the name of the game is Details, Shmeetails, just tell me what works. And today we're talking about making your own GABA, not in your basement, but in your brain. Now, in the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of episodes on using GABA supplements. And in the last episode, I talked about getting GABA from foods. But most of your GABA, most of the time, should be made inside the cells of your nervous system that use the GABA. You shouldn't have to consume GABA to get the calming effects, to get the effects on better, faster decisions under pressure, to get the effects on helping you to face your fears. So now we're going to talk about what do you need if you if there are signs that you do need exogenous GABA, GABA from outside yourself, that may be an indication that you need to get your nutrition straightened up to provide the raw materials to your brain to make its own GABA. And at the very least, you should make sure that you have these bases covered before you start piling GABA supplements on top of your diet. You always want to use supplements to supplement your diet, not to not as a replacement for getting enough nutrients. So what are the nutrients that we need to make GABA? Well, first of all, in order to make GABA, we need to make glutamate. Because glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, is actually what we make GABA, the inhibitory neurotransmitter, from. And to make glutamate, we need glucose. We need to get glucose spiked into the brain. That means our blood sugar has to remain high enough to feed that supply of glucose into the brain. And if we get our blood sugar up a little bit, even though we don't want it to go too high too often, getting the blood sugar up a little bit after a meal will help get more glucose into the brain. That glucose then to be converted into glutamate requires many B vitamins, vitamin B1, thiamine, vitamin B2, riboflavin, vitamin B3, niacin, vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. It requires a compound that's very similar to a B vitamin, but is not one, lipoic acid. And then finally, it requires vitamin B6, the last of these B vitamins. So the king of all B vitamins is liver. If you consume liver once or twice a week in you know three or, three or four ounces per serving, uh, one or two times per week, then that will go a long way towards providing you with better uh, with the B vitamins that you need. Liver is also a very good source of lipoic acid, which is otherwise a pretty expensive supplement. Kidney and heart are also good sources of lipoic acid. So if you focus on liver, but you also work these other organs into your diet, like kidney and heart, that will go a long way towards getting your B vitamins and the lipoic acid that you need into your diet naturally. Nutritional yeast is also a good source of many of these B vitamins. And in general, lean animal proteins, legumes, and whole grains are good sources of most of the B vitamins. With B6, in general, animal products across the board are fairly good sources, better than plant products. But cooking hurts B6 bioavailability. It not only destroys B6, but it also creates a vitamin B6 antagonist that leads to about 40% losses of B6. So it's also good to get foods that can be eaten raw. And in terms of plant foods, bananas happen to be a very good source of B6, both because of uh, the high absorption rate from bananas, the content of bananas, and the fact that usually when you eat bananas, you eat them raw. So when you're trying to get all these nutrients, think liver once or twice a week, when you can fit them in, other organs like kidney and heart, lean proteins, that doesn't mean you can't eat the fat, but you're getting the B vitamins from the lean portion of your, of your protein foods. Uh, nutritional yeast, legumes, and whole grains, and bananas are the collection that give you those, the collection of foods that best give you those nutrients. Okay, so say we have our glutamate. In order to transport it into the neuron that's going to turn it into GABA, we need first to convert it into glutamine. And that's because uh, glutamate is, uh, is not something that you want transporting between cells in your brain because it's a neurotransmitter. So you basically 
hide its neurotransmitter effects by turning it into glutamine so you can get it into the neuron that's gonna make the GABA. And in order to make that conversion, you need magnesium and ATP. Magnesium you best get from a diet that is rich in a broad array of whole unrefined plant foods. And ATP you have to make in your system of energy metabolism that requires all of the B vitamins that I was talking about before, but also requires biotin, which is uh, very abundant in liver and egg yolks. And it, it also requires a number of minerals, especially iron, copper, and sulfur. And then on top of that, it requires that you have good thyroid status and that you have good insulin status. So if you have things that would affect your energy metabolism like insulin resistance, diabetes, or hypothyroidism, then you really wanna address these underlying factors because they could be messing with your ability to make GABA. Then finally, once we have, once we have the glutamine in the neuron that's gonna make the GABA, we then use vitamin B6 once again to make the GABA. And B6, as I mentioned, is uh, rich in all those high B vitamin foods plus the bananas. And then finally, we need GABA to function correctly. And I'll link to the episode in the description of this one, but I did an episode before about how if your energy metabolism is messed up or your electrolytes are messed up, then GABA could not be might not be functioning properly. So to get well-functioning GABA, you wanna make sure that you're getting enough salt and that you're getting enough potassium uh, and that your energy metabolism, things with thyroid and insulin, once again, are all straightened out. So to get enough salt, you wanna salt your food to taste. To get enough potassium, you want a diet that's very high in fruits and vegetables or uh, a diet that is fairly low in fat while containing very few grains, no refined grains, no refined sugar, and uh, plenty of potatoes and legumes. Now, if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, you can get away with eating more fat, but if you're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, you really have to lower the fat content of your diet to get in enough of these medium potassium foods. These nutrients are the raw materials that you need to make GABA. But the last thing that we could say is there's one dietary approach that increases GABA levels in the brain, and that is the ketogenic diet, which is a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet. Its ability to increase GABA levels is the basis or the probable basis of why it is used to treat epilepsy. So if uh, so, you could consider it one of the tools in your kit if you're tr if you're looking for ways to increase your own production of GABA. And I hope you found this useful. Signing off. This is Chris Masterjohn of ChrisMasterjohnPhD.com. This has been Chris Masterjohn Light. I will see you in the next episode.